Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Munch Bunch podcast. Um, you have myself, Megan Vanoy, myofunctional therapist, my partner in crime, Kimi Nishimoto, and one of our most anticipated guests coming on, Dr. Richard Baxter. He literally wrote the book on tongue ties. It's literally called Tongue Tied. So uh, <laughs> there we go. he wrote the book. Um, he's one of the leaders in the field as far as tongue ties and research. He works a ton um, with kids and babies. He does see adults as well. He's based out of Alabama. So tongue tie A-L, Tongue Tied Center, Alabama is where you can find him. And uh, Dr. Baxter's got such cool information for us today. Uh, we're going to jump around a little bit because there is so much for us to talk about. So um, Dr. Baxter, we would love to hear from you, kind of your background, um, a little brief intro of how you got into talking about tongue ties, and we'll just dive in. Sure. Uh, yeah, so I'm a pediatric dentist. I actually grew up in Dallas, Texas. Uh, went to Nashville, went to Vanderbilt for undergrad, UAB for dental school, and then Ohio State for residency at Nationwide Children's Hospital. And then we moved back down to um, Alabama in 2014. And so we had our twins in Ohio in 2014. And what happened was we... Um, uh, my wife was determined to breastfeed them. So we met with a lactation consultant before we even started, uh, before we even had them. And she was like, we are going to breastfeed them. And they came out and they could not nurse. And I was like, that's oh. weird. Um, and so the lactation consultant said, well, they have a tongue tie. And I thought, well, you know, I'm almost a pediatric dentist. I have like two weeks left of residency. And I was like, you know, there's, there's nothing there. It's not to the tip. So they're not tongue tied. And she very graciously walked me through and my name is Jill up in Ohio. She's a lactation consultant. And she's like, no, they see right here, it's restricted. It's too tight. And so we asked a pediatrician. Pediatrician said, we don't see anything, but if your lactation consultant wants me to, we'll clip it. Didn't make a difference. She just got it halfway basically. And then we thought, well, that was taken care of, right? So we were confused. Um, and then several weeks later, we again went to see a dentist who used the laser, Dr. Notstein in Ohio. And that's how I got in this whole thing. And he said, you know, there's not many people doing this. If you're going down to Alabama, I don't think there's many people down there doing it. You should look into it. So I looked into everything I could possibly find, you know, uh, which there was not that much at the time. Uh, and then uh, started providing releases and word of mouth spread. And yeah, we started doing a bunch of them. And then we kept getting this constant question of like, how has my provider never heard of this? My lactation consultant, my dentist, my pediatrician, my you know, mm -hmm. X, Y, Z. And um, so that's a really good question. So I started writing a blog post about it. And uh, which is funny, because like, I would never like write in, um, like, in, if my high school English teacher knew that I wrote a book, she'd probably die. Right? Like, I was not like the language arts, uh, so social studies type person. I was, you know, the more math and science type person. But anyway, so I this blog post and started like, okay, this chapter one, chapter two is getting longer, recruited some people to help out. And that's kind of how the book came about. Uh, so the book was published in 2018. We sold a bunch mm -hmm. of copies of it and uh, we give it away for free on our website, tongtaial.com. Uh, you can get the PDF version for free uh, under the so professionals cool. tab. And then, um, but yeah, it's on Amazon and Audible and all that stuff. And then I uh, started doing some research and then I kept getting requests for training people. So uh, we didn't have any formal way to do that. So it, I sat down and started writing a script for it probably in early 2019. It took about a year and then COVID happened, of course. So we actually had time to film the course, but it, mm -hmm. the script for Tongue Tied Academy, that's our online course, took longer than the book to write. Um, it was longer in length too. And so we got that produces 25 hours of online CE credit um, and uh, for ADA approved. So dental providers can get ADA approved credits. Uh, but it's basically the A to Z of tongue ties. And then we have a live course at our office now uh, once a month. So we just had it a couple of days ago on Friday. I had four doctors, two from New York and two from Georgia that came over. So uh, that's kind of what we're doing now. Um, think about some new research projects coming up, but yeah, I'm excited to be here on the podcast. And um, yeah, it's a privilege and an honor to be invited. Yes, thank you. And it's so crazy because, you know, we hear stories, you know, you hear stories like yours all the time. We hear stories like yours all the time. And, you know, I've shared this a million times over because I talk nonstop about Isabel at this point in my life. But, uh, you know, we ran, I got to experience it as a mom too of, you know, instantly in the hospital, I was like, mm, something's not right. You know, I'm texting, you know, Dr. Thomas, like literally after I gave birth and I was like, there, she's tied. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. I tried to, I tried to schedule with him before she was even born, but, yeah. um, you know, and lactation kind of was like, well, maybe, you know, visually not so much, but like appearance. Okay. 
And then the pediatrician blew me off. Um, But, you know, luckily I was in a position already to know my little heart-shaped tongue baby who gagged every time she tried to eat, (laughs) that it wasn't normal. So um, it's crazy how we hear these stories all the time. And what's been really cool, especially with what you're doing, is you're, you're so good about spreading information and you're so good about like not keeping it a secret. Like you wrote the book, you just said you give it for free online, the PDF version, like that access to information, I think is one of the coolest things that you're doing right now. Mm, It's so generous. It's Mm -hmm. so generous. And also, um, Megan and I have taken the, um, tongue tied Academy class actually it was like part Mm -hmm. of our training um so we absolutely loved it and I Mm -hmm. recommend it to all uh, providers that are doing tongue tie releases especially on babies and kids it's really 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 great Mm -hmm. and um the other thing I love about like your program too is uh I feel like there's a lot of um issues we're running into lately about people being very expansion focused only and yours yeah. is more like, what's the function? Like, how can we function well when you literally can't move that tie? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, that's one thing I really loved about your program too. And you had so many other interesting pieces to it that other um, other organizations and other trainings don't go into, such as like this, the speech part of it and the, the feeding and the reflux and the, the mom's pain as well as the baby's pain. Mm -hmm. Um, And then all the different ages of life and how those ties affect people at different ages, because, you know, a little toddler packs food in their cheeks and they projectile spit, but an adult may have reflux or they may Mm -hmm. have digestion problems or constipation, things like that. So that's one thing I I really loved about your program. Yeah, it mm-hmm. never really just kind of changes or evolves uh, right. as time goes on. That's what yeah. we tell the moms and the babies. Like, you know, if the good news is you can do it now and it also has lasting impacts, but like, you know, if it's not taken care of, it, it doesn't just affect the newborn period. You know, it's, right. you get six months and they're starting to struggle with solids. But what's crazy with speech is you think speech is kids, but we do babies for feeding reasons, right? We did, we had one come back yesterday, a one month old baby. Uh, we did it a week before. It said already making new sounds and babbling more, like immediately, like the same yeah. day of the release. So, I mean, it impacts speech like in the, in the newborns and they're trying to move their tongue around, explore. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's super cool. And so that's something I wouldn't have picked up, but it's really just listening to the parents. I mean, the parents will tell you uh, what's going on. Yeah. And that's, that's why I came up with the forms, like the, the assessment forms and the follow-up forms, like constipation. I would have never guessed that, but mm-hmm. probably 10 people came back and said, my kid's less constipated. What's going on? And then, so eventually I was like, okay, we need to add that to the list. And then everyone starts checking that and mm-hmm. it's it better. Well, they can chew their food better, right? If it starts the journey, right. It'll end the journey. Right. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, GI doctors, like that doesn't make any sense. You know, like something up here, like, well, I mean, the mouth is the beginning of the GI tract, you know, like, right. Yeah, uh, it's not that your mouth is over here and the GI tract is over here. Um, so anyway, the constipation uh, as well as the swallow, right? So mm-hmm. the strength of the swallow, that's actually the peristaltic wave that travels down your GI tract. So if you can swallow with more force, third reason is um, sympathetic versus parasympathetic. So if you relax that fascia, the connective tissue, the stuff you pull off a chicken, uh, you relax that under your neck. Basically, um, it goes throughout your whole body, and especially the visceral fascia, like the deep layer mm-hmm. of investing fascia. And it relaxes everything. You can like go into more rest and digest versus fight or flight mode. And so um, they can digest better. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. Like the body wide effects, um, a lot having to do with fascia, but um, yeah, just in general. So, yeah, I think one of the first things that stuck out to me that I never really thought about, which kind of is like a duh once I like knew, but stuttering was a big thing. Um, and you, even in the tongue tied Academy, one of your patients was a big stutterer Mm -hmm. and went through, you showed that whole video about stuttering. Yeah. The the guy, the guy, the guy, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking of that guy, the guy in particular, um, Mm -hmm. and just like, it was amazing just to see that difference. Cause sometimes people who stutter, they'll say things like, Oh, it's just kind of like a nervous tick or, you know, like nobody's ever, I tried, yeah. Or I tried speech and I never, you know, like. They just say it's because I'm nervous. They have you like, talk like a robot, mm-hmm. or like monotone, or like all these yeah. different strategies, but mm-hmm. no one ever looks. And theirs were not obvious. So yeah, in uh, Tongue Tied Academy, we had one dad. Uh, so we actually did his child. And then I noticed he had a bad stutter. And so I asked him, I said, like, 
have you ever had your tongue looked at? He's like, yeah, they looked at it, but it wasn't obvious. And so his was not to the tip. So a lot of these adults that are we're seeing are, are not to the tip. They're maybe mm-hmm. halfway back, but for them, it's impacting them. So we had him read this it's called the rainbow passage. Basically it's a, um, it tests all the different sounds that are in the English language. And so we had him read it beforehand. He stuttered real bad through it. And then we had him read it immediately afterward. And uh, Lauren, the speech therapist was there uh, with us. And so afterward he started crying during the passage and I thought he was hurting. I mm-hmm. was like, are, are you okay? Is it hurting? And he said, no, I said, it's unbelievable. I said, I've been waiting my whole life just to say a sentence without stuttering. And it hits you like, oh, like a ton mm. of bricks. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's really, uh, it's I actually think I might've, I think I cried during that part. <laughs> I said, yeah, I did too. I did. I totally like, I got like chills and I totally cried. And like, it was, it was crazy just to see him like feel that way, especially, you know, um, people, you know, they blame it on anxiety or that's just the way that I am. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, oh man, that I feel like that's something that a lot of people don't know is related. So for me, I thought that was so, so cool to see, to see instantly. Like, that's, what's crazy to me. Like you would think it's right after. Yeah. You would even think like, okay, we need to practice a little bit, go through some speech, learn this, but it was, you know, for that guy was instant, which was so cool. Yeah, we have a lot of kids that can say R better afterward or L mm-hmm. better or new words the same day and, and younger kids that have speech delay. And so it's not just articulation. Uh, a lot of people think like, oh, it's just they have trouble with, you know, tripping over words or articulation, but it's mm-hmm. it's fluency, it's articulation, it's the whole speech delay, it's all those things. Um, and then little babies that start talking, you know, uh, or babbling more uh, mm-hmm. right out like the same day, you know, yeah. it's not like months later, this is immediate changes or like crawling the next day. That's what's crazy. We had one just wrote us an email a couple of days ago. He was, I guess, army crawling. And then he went to mm-hmm. like different crawling. I'm not sure. I'm not an OT, but uh, he was crawling better. And then yeah. he was eating better right away. And within like three weeks, he actually was able to graduate from feeding therapy because oh, cool. he stopped choking and they weren't concerned anymore. And so we don't mark it as like a replacement for therapy. We mark it as like an adjunct to help therapy progress quicker and easier. Um, mm-hmm. So that the therapist is not, you know, banging their head while they're in, you know, feeding therapy for eight years for mm-hmm. someone, you know what I mean? Or speech therapy for 10 years. Like if you're plateauing, you know, there's probably something else going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah, no, I think that's so cool. Yeah. Um, in my, if the other thing that I, and I give you credit for it in my evaluation, so don't even worry about it. But the other thing I stole I from care. you. <laughs> I put you, you on can there. change it, change it however you want. <laughs> yeah, the forms are like word documents, so people can change them and make them better. Yeah, but what I do when I'm talking to because of what you brought up earlier of, um, you know, why hasn't anybody told me about this? You said this in Tongue Tied Academy, you know, common doesn't equal normal. And mm-hmm. I have like put that on my evaluation. I'm like, Dr. Richard Baxter. Um, sure. you don't have to it, quote it. I, I think I came up, I don't even know who came up with it though. It might not have been me. Oh, well. like, there's so many things just like floating around like the shoelace example right like, mm-hmm. like shoelaces tied together I use that every day almost like I like yeah that's pretend a good one to, like too. jump over mm-hmm. uh, with my shoelaces tied together and like yeah you can't walk like that or like the arms restricted mm-hmm. you can't throw like mm-hmm. I can throw just fine like no no like cut that like okay now you can throw a ball mm-hmm. so, yeah. yeah yeah it's so it's just so good and I think that really resonates with people because that's where a lot of like the public gets really frustrated is you know how did I get how did my kid get to 10 or how, as an adult, how did I get 20, 30, 40 years? And nobody has ever told me about this. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So, and I know you're working on some research. So, um, I think yeah. one of the big research that came out this year, I think you said was talking about the lip tie. Lip tie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Will you tell That's us funny. a little more about that? <laughs> yeah. So basically the AAPD guidelines, I had a um, chance to give some input into that a few years ago, probably f- mm-hmm four years ago now, uh, when it was uh, probably 2018, 2019, when they revised it. And I submitted 130 changes to the guidelines. (laughs) Uh, They accepted 30 of them, which I was happy with. The the one that I wanted that got me started on the whole thing was the lip tie thing, because it's so like obviously wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, You release the tissue, it closes up like almost always. And Mm -hmm. Kotlo has been saying this for almost 50 years. So it's not like novel information, but before that, um, the earliest article I could find that's been cited on like wait till after braces uh, to do the lip tie or else it will cause scar tissue and the gap won't close between the upper teeth. So a diastema, think like Michael Strahan, you know, a big gap uh-huh. in the teeth. And But when you do it in uh, the primary dentition, so baby teeth, you release that 
it closes up most of the time. Even in adult teeth, if you'll yeah. close it up before the canines come in, it will very often uh, close mm -hmm. on its own. And so it does not cause scar tissue. So the article of Bashara 1972 is one that people cite and say, oh, it will cause scar tissue. But if you read the article, it never once, zero times mentions scar tissue. So what happens is people publish things and no one actually, the reviewers don't actually go back and look at all the citations to see right. if the article says what that article said it did, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, <laughs> Yeah. Um, which is bad. And then the guidelines, uh, they actually cited a survey of pediatric dentists, oral surgeons, orthodontists to see what their attitudes were like, hey, should we do the lip tie first uh, with the phrenectomy or should we just close the gap first with braces? And they were all taught in school and residency that you're supposed to close it with braces, then do the lip tie. Well, that's what they said in the article. So that's what the guidelines cited. Um, and then, so it's just a survey, which is like expert opinion, like level five evidence. So I told him, I said, we see this every day. And he said, you know what, if you have evidence to support that, why don't you publish it? So I said, okay, I will. <laughs> so I went through and we measured each patient we had that had teeth from 2015 to 2018, measured it, um, and the gap closed up 94.5% of the time. So almost always. I mean, we know this as pediatric dentists, because like, right. if you have a tooth pulled, you have to put a spacer in. Right. If you don't put a spacer, the tooth will drift forward. All the teeth want to drift towards the midline. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, yeah, it closes up, and even in permanent teeth too. So we met a lot of resistance getting it published. We had to submit it to one journal. And then they said like, oh, this is a controversial subject, rejected. Submit it again, said, oh, there's no control group, rejected. Submit it again, like submit it again, submit it again. Um, and so anyway, it was, uh, it was a big struggle. And so finally uh, it was accepted. Um, and we, we changed it here and there a little bit, um, just some of the wording. So we said, okay, there's no control group, that's fine. So we're not gonna say it closes up but we can say that it doesn't form scar tissue because we had like several year follow-up on these patients. Um, and so uh, anyway, it closed up and it's much more cosmetic. So um, when they smile, you can see their teeth better. It yeah. can help. Main thing, the main reason we're doing honestly is because parents couldn't brush their kids' teeth. Every time they try to brush the top teeth, especially they would oh, yeah. pull back and fight <laughs> and it turned brushing into a chore. And you think, yeah how many of these kids were taken for dental rehab at the hospital, having to put them to sleep to fix their teeth, put crowns on their teeth because uh, they can't brush their teeth. Mm -hmm. And it's trapping mm -hmm. milk up there, not to mention it can cause issues with getting food off a spoon, bilabial speech sounds, BP, M and W sounds. Um, and then it can also cause, um, yeah, issues obviously with breastfeeding and that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And strangely mm -hmm. enough, nasal breathing. So when you release the fascia under the tongue, they have like, like this, like the neck tension and shoulder tensions just like disappears often. When yeah. you release the lip tie, we've heard a lot of adults say, I can breathe through my nose easier. Like it feels like they have yes. like a great right drip on. Have you heard people say that, Kimmy? Yeah. Yes. It's, yeah, um, I think, I think actually what part of it is, is you have an energy meridian right under your lip. So mm. I do what's called EFT tapping, where you mm -hmm. use a finger and you tap on different points on your face. Mm -hmm. There's an energy meridian right there, which I think is part of it too. I haven't thought about that too. There's so much that we don't understand. Ugh. It's like, it works. Amen. I can't exactly <laughs> tell you why. I think a lot of it has to do with the fashion. Like mm -hmm. it feels like you have like, it's called a coddles maneuver. If you mm -hmm. push right here, yep. you can like open your nose or like the breathe right strip. Mm -hmm. It feels like that, but all the time, even with minimal lip ties on adults mm -hmm. will report that. So anyway, mm -hmm. just some, it, that's, that's how it is. That's what research starts. Like mm -hmm. notice, make an observation and then mm -hmm. see it again and then try to figure out why. I'm curious to do um, mine and, and possibly my fiance Andy's because uh, every time I kind of push there on him, he's like, whoa, I'm so mm -hmm. relaxed. <laughs> it is interesting. I mean, there's minimal risk. It's like, if you want to yeah. pierce your ear, if you want to pierce your nose, like whatever, like if you mm -hmm. want to pierce your freedom, like people do that all the time, they'll pierce the freedom under their tongue. Yeah. But Hey, if you want to release it and give some functional benefit, you know, people pierce their baby's ears. The pediatrician's like, Oh, don't do that. You know, or circumcision, like, you know, it's probably no, I think 90% of the boys it's, mm -hmm. it's a high number of the boys are circumcised. That's 10 or 15 minutes. And for what minimal benefit, there's not much research supporting mm -hmm. it, actually. It's more just preference, which is fine. If you want to do it, do it. But this is 10 to 15 seconds. And there's for right. a current issue as a baby, plus continuing effects down the stream. So anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy to me. Like, um, you know, in my family, my my dad had a lip tie that, like, you know, we think maybe got taken care of by <clears> but 
a chair from my uncle when he was little, but, (laughs) you know, and then one of my sisters and, um, you know, and both him and her both had premolars extracted, you know, obviously like this is, I was, you know, still in elementary school, so I didn't know (laughs) Mm -hmm. any better. Right. And then, you know, and then now, you know, my baby had a lip tie and it caused like a bone, like a notch literally in the bone. It was so hard that she had little like 360 blisters and within like two days once her you know it's like you can see these things generally generationally happen too Mm -hmm. and you know it's like are we going to kick the can down the road are we going to try something different Mm -hmm. Mm. I have two questions for you Dr. Baxter oh yeah one is is it true for our lady listeners that if you release a lip tie that you have a slightly fuller looking lip Yeah. Everyone's been happy. And I'm not like a cosmetic dentist. We try to do cosmetic pediatric dentistry, you know, like nice uh, teeth, but um, people it's like reverse Cupid's bow or like whatever Mm -hmm. they call it. Like it's supposed to look more full and Mm -hmm. just easier. And even like the smile, if you smile, you can't see your teeth, but if you Mm -hmm. smile big, some people are like, Oh, it's like I got Botox or a filler Mm -hmm. or something like that. But yeah, they, people like the way that it looks afterwards. So, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the other thing that I've been hearing lately is that lip ties we are suspecting are impeding the maxilla from growing. Mm. Uh, What do you know about that? Yeah, it's possible. People say that with buckle ties as well. So like up Mm. in the upper cheeks as well might like restrict growth. It's hard to know. Um, Mm. I think it's certainly possible. There's a lot we don't know, Uh, but it's, it's hard to know. I think the bigger factor with maxilla growth is if the tongue is down, resting down, mm-hmm. if it's not resting up in the palate, like a, like a scaffold basically for the maxilla, then if you're not getting that stimulation up there, like mine, I had, my maxilla was underdeveloped because I had a tongue tie for 30 years and didn't know it. And so I had to have jaw surgery and all these problems. It was mostly my upper jaw. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was too far back. So it didn't come forward enough. I mean, there's also, it's certainly a genetic component too. So there's genetics, there's epigenetics, you know, like outside of genes. Um, there's, you know, diet factors like the jaws book or dental diet book. Um, so there's, there's all kinds of different factors. So trying to, as best you can look at holistically and, um, all the stuff, but yeah, I think there's certainly some truth to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, you know, it's, it's that tension where it's like p- pulling things back, but then also the tongue's down, like nothing's working in your favor. Right. Mm-hmm. And then we're, no. then we're breathing through the mouth. Everything's going down and back dynamite (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah. so talk to us what are so some of the stuff that um we've been talking or seeing more about lately is like around singing and some professional singers and yeah non-professional in the car shower singers like yeah right (laughs) that's that's more me I, i sing frozen to the kids just to (laughs) <laughs> it kind of throws them off. Um, actually, you know, we had, uh, we had several opera singers. The first time I heard it was several years ago, and I'm working on a blog post. I'll put it up in probably this next week or so on singing. Um, but cool. I had a uh, probably six or seven year old little boy. He's in choir and he came back like for his follow up. He's like, Mom, I hit the high dough. I hit the high dough in choir. So, like, Aww. he was like, raising up several <laughs> notes, I think, mm-hmm. um, higher. And he was super excited because he could sing better. I noticed myself, like I could sing easier, like louder, clearer, uh, without getting fatigued. I could talk more after I had mine done and, and not get fatigued. I could read books to my children easier. So again, like it's not just articulation with the speech. All the studies focus on articulation. It's mm-hmm. so much what's like vocal fatigue. Yeah. Uh, and then interestingly, there's some myofunctional therapists. I'm not sure if you guys know them. Um, Jessica Luffy, she does, it's like Opus OM. She does like just singers or she does a lot of singers, um, mm-hmm. professional mm-hmm. singers. Um, she was a classically trained singer. And then there's Diary of a Tongue-Tied Singer, uh, Leah. We, we did hers. Um, she'll tell you that. So I can tell mm-hmm. you not being a HIPAA violation, but, um, and it's, they had a thing. It's actually on YouTube. It's called, um, if you type in tongue tie and singing, it was like a conference they had. Uh, oh, it was cool. really cool. And so it's, it's free. You can watch it on YouTube. There's two days to it. I've watched the first day already, but I was trying to learn more about it for this blog post. And uh, it was really interesting. I mean, it impacts the, right. It's all about like the larynx and the hyoid and how you can separate those out. And I'm, I'm probably butchering it, but basically <laughs> there's a lot of things that uh, matter with your tongue. And even yeah. if it's a little bit restricted, um, if you're opera singing at that high level or professional singers, we had a country music star uh, come in that is Kimmy's patient um, <laughs> that we saw uh, probably about a month ago now. Um, so we need to see how his singing is, but mm-hmm. uh, he's had some other benefits, Kimmy, if you want to share. Yeah, he told me that um, he feels like his anxiety is 
very drastically decreased since his release. And even during the procedure, I don't know if you remember this or not, but he had a vagal response where mm. he felt like his body like kind of have an energy shift. He felt a little woozy for a second. Yeah, he was all woozy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the interesting thing is ever since his release, he feels like he's able to handle things better and he feels mm -hmm. less stress and anxiety in his life. I've had about four to five patients that have had significantly less um, anxiety since their release. Um, one yeah. of them actually was able to get off medication, which That's I'm crazy. so jealous of. <laughs> What's crazy? Cause yeah. I guess they say that the fascia has memory. Right. And like holds like your emotions almost as a fascia again, like holds all your body structures together. It's mm -hmm. like around all of your muscles, like around all your bone, like all that stuff mm -hmm. to be released that it's like, whoa, like when yeah. I did my own, um, it's a long story. Uh, <laughs> when I did my own, I had to stop. I was like, whoa, it felt like a wave of like euphoria, mm -hmm. almost like, whoa, I had to just like chill out for just a second, almost like maybe like a vagal response. Mm -hmm. Um, and my assistant who was helping me, I did it in the mirror anyway. Uh, if I had it done again, I'd have like Zoggy do it and actually yeah. closed. But uh, anyway, it's a long story. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was crazy the difference in like the neck tension, all that stuff afterward. Mm -hmm. And I'm so much more flexible now too. Have y'all heard people report that? Yeah, that they can touch uh, their yes. toes like, better. I can touch mm -hmm. my toes, but I can get my whole hand on the ground now. Like yeah, and that's like I don't know, five or six inches more of range. Um, mm -hmm. One lady, a uh, friend of ours, was like doing yoga, and she's like why am I upside down now? Like, <laughs> like, this is not normal. Like she was like, way like mm -hmm. bending backward or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it can help a, a ton. We've had moms of, that are PTs, for example, and like they nurse mm -hmm. their kids increased range of motion in their neck. Yeah. They can check their blind spot easier, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Something really fascinating. I was just thinking about this, with the flexibility, um, I had this lady who every time she would bend over, she felt like her spine was like a rubber band mm. and she felt like she was going to snap when she would bend over. And after her release, she didn't have that anymore. And like a lot of her chronic pain got better because she didn't have that fascia pull. I have this really silly sort of um, analogy for what a tongue tie is because your fascia is like a wetsuit over your whole body. Mm -hmm. But when you have a tongue tie, it's like you're wearing a wetsuit that's too small and you got a wedgie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. So good. Yes. I That's love true. a good, I love a good wedgie analogy. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, no, it's yeah. so true. I've had a couple of patients. I have one patient, actually, I'm trying to get him to come to Portland because he does a queen cover band and he's on YouTube and um, mm -hmm. I love queen. And so um, he's been able to hold some of those like Freddie Mercury notes longer um, he's been able to kind of like, just like his endurance and his performances have gotten better. Um, he's in LA, so he saw Zaki. Um, but yeah, he's, he's reported that I've had patients who are pain patients get off of Botox, wow. um, who would like get right everywhere. TMJ. Yeah. Oh, this one patient, actually, she was working, um, up in Minnesota and, uh, like she would get everywhere, like neck, shoulders, traps, like just, she was like, from here up, just full of Botox. And by the time we got through therapy and she had Sjogren's and she had a lot going on, she was 32, like young, Whoa. young. Mm. And, you know, we got her in a munchie and her Sjogren's got better. We got her tongue tie released. And by the time it was all said and done, she was only sometimes still getting a little um, Botox right in her traps. Um, but that was it by the time it was all said and done. And she would go consistently every three months for years so it's just crazy like what the, how the body responds mm -hmm. when it's actually kind of working the way it's supposed to <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah um an interesting thing about the singing going back to that yeah and i'm not sure if you've covered this in your research or if it's something that you are going to look into but i used to be a singer in high school mm -hmm. and i have always had sleep apnea even since i was a kid um, my singing changed in high school, like after high school, because I had silent reflux and didn't know. Mm -hmm. And so then right around, like when I was 18, my voice started to change and I would, um, my voice would catch like a prepubescent boy. Yeah. And looking back now, I'm like, oh, it's the silent reflux causing vocal Irritating cord damage. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. definitely possible. Um, Mm -hmm. I just found it's called the tongue symposium uh, voice with Julia is like the information, but yeah, the tongue symposium, if you look at it on, on YouTube, 
and I, I enjoy doing adults. We don't advertise we do adults because we'd be overrun with adults and we got to help the little babies. Like we had this little three day old baby yesterday, just like a little bean, Aww. so sweet and squishy and stuff. And um, so adorable, um, but having lots of struggles with nursing had like 15 check marks already, um, mm. you know, on, on the, the symptoms on the form. Yeah. So lots of issues and terrible pain for mom. So mm-hmm. we try to make sure we have enough room. We were able to work them in uh, last minute, but but we do enjoy doing adults. So if someone like uh, wants to come see us, we uh, they have to be worked with myofunctional therapists. So reach out to Megan or Kimmy or something. Um, and we have, <laughs> we've listed some people too. And then, uh, but yeah, it, it can make a huge difference um, for adults as, as well as kids and uh, mm-hmm. anyone in between. So yeah, it's so cool. Mm-hmm. Oh. Man, I can't wait to kind of hear where this next research project goes uh, with this thingy. And yeah, I need to look into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> what was what were some of the other research projects that you were working on? Yeah. So um, back a couple of years ago, uh, the big one we got published in Clinical Pediatrics, which is actually a pretty good pediatrician journal, mm-hmm. uh, was on speech, feeding, and sleep. And basically, we saw in speech, so it wasn't 100% of the kids got better. Uh, they didn't all have the problem to begin with, but right. it was like 83% had, sorry, uh, 89% had improved speech afterward, mm-hmm. after one one week or one month. Um, and that's without therapy even. That's just like just the procedure. And then the therapy is going to get them to like, you know, 99% um, of the kids, hopefully. Uh, feeding. So solid feeding had never really been reported in the literature before 2018. We published an article on it. Um, so feeding improvements, like less picky eating, less spitting mm. out foods, less choking or gagging on foods, that kind of stuff. So solid feeding, because again, breastfeeding is established pretty well in the literature. Bottle feeding now with Dr. Gahari has been established, mm-hmm. but this was uh, solid feeding. And then sleep. And again, people like the AAO, the otolaryngologist, the ENTs, they'll say like, oh, their cons- consensus statement, which is not a guideline, but they just got together in a room and said like, hey, what do we agree on? They said, tongue tie doesn't have anything to do with sleep. And that's totally wrong. Like ask Dr. Zoggy, you know, um, and all the sleep surgeon doing all the time. Mm-hmm. We see it with newborn babies, they'll sleep deeper, less snoring, less restless sleeping kids, toddlers, you know, less snoring, less kicking mom, um, sleeping deeper, school age kids getting off their ADD medication because mm-hmm. they're not sleeping well, they had poor quality sleep, uh, which a lot of people don't realize, you know, if they yeah. have poor quality sleep, you know, their brain, basically if the tongue is held down, they'll fall back and chokes them while they're sleeping. So they're um, getting their tongue up on the palate with myofunctional therapy and the tongue tie release. They can get deeper sleep and then they feel more rested and they can pay attention better and they get less hyper. Um, so our 2020 yeah. study was on that. Sleep improved 83% of the time. Uh, speech improved 89% and solid feeding 83%. Mm-hmm. Not just short-term improvements, but then... Um, in 2021, we did the TRQ, the tongue restriction questionnaire. So basically this was a, a form people could fill out on hygiene visits. So it's mainly for like hygienists, for dentists, uh, pediatricians could use it. I mean, my mom used it. She's an allergist in Dallas. You can use it to screen patients anywhere, a medical mm-hmm. um, facility. Basically it's just the greatest hits of our tongue tie assessment form to see how many um, symptoms they have, how, and then have them lift the tongue, right? Because elevation is the biggest indicator. It's not protrusion or sticking the tongue out. Mm -hmm. I mean, someone lift the tongue is the best quick and dirty test. Yeah. So it's how high can they lift their tongue? How many symptoms they have? How much is it impacting quality of life? Does it impact greatly or not at all? Well, not at all. We're probably not going to do anything. If the patient doesn't see any benefit to it, then it's not worth putting through it. The, you know, the money, the discomfort, the, you know, it's therapy takes a while. Um, Mm -hmm. But if it is significantly impacting quality of life, and it's just a few things. So basically the form is just to um, have a conversation starter with parents. Uh, we're, I'm a pediatric dentist, so mainly parents. But for you guys, you know, if you're in an adult GP practice doing hygiene, it would be for, for you and the patient. Um, mm-hmm. People can test themselves with it as well and see like, okay, hey, I have like 15 check marks on here. Like, you know, there's probably something, a, something going on. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And that's not including all the awareness, the body awareness part. Cause I have all these things. I'm like, I'm seeing a lot of stuff here. Are you sure that's not affecting I know. you? I'm like, nope, nope. I'm and great. Could, and they just don't want to talk about it, which right. is fine. I mean, that's, that's their choice. I had one just now, like it was pretty tight uh, this morning. Um, and let me think even last week I, I did tons of hygiene checks for spring break that the doctors were out. So I was doing all the yeah. dental. I normally just do most about 10 tongue ties a day is what we normally do. Uh, and then the follow-up. So I do one sedation in the morning, but I was doing all the dentistry. And so I probably saw, I don't know, 40, 50 hygiene patients and probably 15 of them had a very significant like restriction. 
And of those 15, maybe half of them were like, yeah, like we want a brochure. Like, well, just like look into it. Like we're not saying like do it today. Just like look right. into it. You know, this might be impacting speech um, or eating or whatever. And so our, our go-to question, if I see somebody type, hey, mom, any speech or eating or sleep issues? And then that, they'll be like, no, he's good. I'm like, okay, they don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. But if people are like, oh, yeah, like, you know, what do you mean? Like, his eating, he's a picky eater. Like, yeah, it could be picky. Is he picky with meat or textures? Is he um, a slow eater? Is he the last one to finish meals? Is it a struggle to go out? Um, is he in speech therapy? Is he stuttering? Is he speech delayed? And then the sleeping, is he sleep all crazy everywhere with his, you know, toss and turn in circles in the bed, come in waking up in the middle of the night? Because how many parents wouldn't pay? Like, how much money would you pay to get your child to sleep in their own bed? And often it's just because they're, they're light mm -hmm. sleeping. They're not getting yeah. deep sleep. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, you brought up a good question with the sedation. Oh, yeah. um, so obviously like little, little ones, they can be swaddled and it takes like 10 to 15 seconds. No big yep. deal. Yep. Um, toddlers, it seems like that is very no man's land. <laughs> that's a tough one. Like nobody wants we, to touch a it. two year old. Yeah. Oh, it's so key though. We have to help the two year olds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause like you got to get them before they develop so many bad habits. Mm -hmm. If you wait till five and they're starting kindergarten, oh my gosh, they have years of bad habits. Yeah. So anyway, go totally. Ahead. Yeah. So what is, um, if they need to be sedated, what is your thoughts on that? And yeah. what are the risks of like, you know, sedation versus general anesthesia? Sure. So we do all different uh, routes, whatever the patient needs. And it's kind of individualized, almost always for tongue tie. We just do it in the office just under local anesthesia. So just some topical jelly. Once they're about five years old, if they think that they'll tolerate a pinch from injectable lidocaine, we don't say the S word, S-H-O-T. Mm -hmm. We always spell it out. Um, so because if they hear they're getting a shot, they'll you know, run out of the room. So I'll say injectable lidocaine um, in front of the kid, but the, uh, so that's how we do 99% of them. Babies, as you said, just a little bit of numbing jelly. Uh, CO2 laser, it's about 15 seconds for the lip, mm -hmm. about five or 10 seconds for the tongue. If you use a diode laser, it's basically a hot tip. It takes about a minute per area. We did that when we first started. And so not all lasers are the same uh, for those who are listening, but, uh, and I know you guys know that already, but we use a CO2 laser, which seems to be the best wavelength of um, coagulation or hemostasis, making it stop bleeding, as well as efficient cutting. So the CO2 mm -hmm. wavelength uh, using physics, that's why it's the best. But um, all that to say, uh, so that allows us to do toddlers very easily in the office. So uh, we put them to sleep for dental reasons. If a three-year-old has 15 cavities, I can't fix that in the office. we got to take them to children's hospital. They're right. totally asleep under general anesthesia, which is very safe. I mean, you're more likely to get in a car accident, have something happen to you than like under anesthesia. Mm -hmm. It's very safe. In office sedation. Yeah. In office sedation. So I did four of those today. Normally I do like one a day because it's, it can be rough. That's yeah. where you give them some a Versed, lot. which is like a Valium. It just relaxes them. They're still awake. Um, and then uh, we're, we're backed up on sedation. So I decided I'll do some, um, today's my off day. So uh, <laughs> I was like, you know what, I'll come in and do some. And three of them went well. One of them was pretty rough. It was a rodeo and trying to get a bunch of fillings done. And it was tough. So for tongue tie, it doesn't really make sense to do that because it's more expensive. You're adding additional risk. The kid's loopy and can get angry afterward. It's called angry child syndrome after Versed. You can look it up. Um, but basically it's 10 second procedure. So like we wouldn't sedate them to do like a flu shot. You know what I mean? Or a pediatrician right. wouldn't sedate them to do a flu shot. So I kind of feel like that same way. Like it's 10 seconds, you know, so for two, three-year-olds, uh, 18 month olds, we don't put them to sleep. We don't sedate them. We did have one patient last week. She was older. She's autistic. Yeah. She's very nervous, but she's finally doing better at the dental office. And I talked to mom. I mean, she needs lip and tongue. She'd probably do better with sutures, honestly, because doing right. stretches on her would be difficult. So we are going to take her to children's. She has a couple other dental needs though. So I was like, in my mind, mm -hmm. I could justify like, okay, right. there's a couple of dental needs we can do that way. We'll fix all our teeth up and do the lip and tongue. She's asleep. Mm -hmm. um, for just tongue tie, you know, we would do laser. We wouldn't be able to suture, obviously, if she's not cooperative. Right. Um, so there, there's always these trade-offs. That's the kind of the things you're thinking about. And if it's a teenager or an adult, we would not put them to sleep. Um, so oral surgeons, that's their MO to put kids, uh, adults to sleep for, you know, wisdom teeth or implants and stuff like that. So we did one little girl. She was like five or six. We did her in the office. No nitrous. No, because you don't really even need nitrous. It's so quick. And then dad, we sent to the oral surgeon to have his tongue tie released. And they put dad to sleep. And I was like, that's like a money grab. Yeah, I did not need to be asleep for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so then after that, then I started doing adults and took Zoggy's course. And, um, and so now, again, we have like more streamlined, right? Like they do the myofunctional therapy first. Mm -hmm. When the myofunctional therapist says they're ready, then they can schedule with us. So mm -hmm. 
It seems to work better for teenagers and adults, basically. Yeah. And then the school age kids, they have a speech therapist they're working with almost always. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All the different avenues. And uh, yeah, it's, yeah, the pre cooperative stage. Uh, <laughs> we're hitting that pretty strong over here in my house, too. But um, it is so important, right? Because that is kind of the conversation is just wait, 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 wait. And it's like, you know, mm-hmm. if we all had bad habits for five years, it doesn't matter how old we are. Like, oh. think about how hard that is to break right like uh you know well, it doesn't matter what kind of habit it is if it's not healthy like you know and the other thing is what we say a lot with kids is like yeah you know we can wait for expansion but like if we wait till they're eight nine ten they're already 10 years behind in growth or they're eight years behind in growth whatever that is it's like we want to set them up as early as we can and brain development like mm-hmm. you can't wait on brain yeah yeah you can't wait on brain a day Mm-hmm. By the time they're age three, it's 80% the size of an adult brain. Oof. By the time they're five, by the time they're five, it's 90% yeah. the size of adult brain. Yeah. So like we need to get them early. And a lot of that brain growth and development and synaptogenesis, like connecting new memories, that happens during deep sleep. Mm-hmm. So if their body, if they're functionally choking all night on their tongue, essentially they are waking up all night, little bits all night. So there's some light stage of sleep. They're not getting that deep, high quality sleep that impacts brain development, you know? And I think they've looked at like, it's like 10 IQ points. Like that's okay. the difference between like an A student and like a B student or A and C student, you know, mm-hmm. you good job and a not good job. And so it, it can impact so many things. I don't know. There's lots of C students that do great, but like, you know, they get good jobs, but um, there's so many things that could impact. Like, again, you have survival or we can like have them thrive, you know, right. like so many people, they set the bar so low for these babies, like, well, they're gaining weight and it's not hurting moms. Like that, the bar's down here, but yeah. there's so many band-aids they're spitting up and so, okay. They're spitting up. Here's some reflux medicine. Uh, they're colicky. Here's some gripe water. It hurts. Here's a nipple shield, mm-hmm. just band-aid, band-aid, band-aid instead of what's the root cause. And right. so again, we, we don't want to just to th- uh, survive. We're trying to get them to thrive. And that's yeah. what parents want. Like they, they oh, don't yeah. want to be on the struggle bus, you know? Mm-hmm. So anyway. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, well, it's been so fun to have you, Dr. Baxter. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you. It's kind of rambling, but I feel like I hope we got some knowledge. No, I, <laughs> we love your passion and we love your um, your gusto. And thank you for all that you do in our field and mm-hmm. for also being a champion for myofunctional therapy because we work hand in hand. You, We do the therapy and then you make the magic come in. So we really appreciate you and we appreciate we appreciate your book and also for training all these other dentists to do it and do it well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. cutting corners. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Like people are like, Oh, it doesn't work. It's like, well, if it didn't work, you have to look at why. So mm-hmm. I mean, if you cut it halfway, it won't work. Mm-hmm. If you don't do therapy with it, it won't work nearly as well. It might work a little bit like, right. It's like maybe like less nipple pain for mom, but like it's not working with lactation or mm-hmm. seeing body work. Like you're not going to get all the changes. Mm-hmm. Uh, if there's no follow-up, if you don't see the patient back, you clip it and they, they leave. Like a lot mm-hmm. of our colleagues do, unfortunately, um, that where they, they don't see them back, then that's a problem. Mm-hmm. And if there's no post-op exercises or, or stretches, then that's also, it's going to stick back together. Like if you got your ear pierced, you didn't wear the earring. So, mm-hmm. uh, and then backing up a little bit, they have to have the proper diagnosis and proper assessment. So all those things, if you leave out proper diagnosis or assessment, diagnosis, the right treatment, a full release, aftercare, therapy, Mm -hmm. like all those things have to be in place to see the results. Mm -hmm. And so when people don't have a good result, you have to look at, okay, what, what was missing from that? It's probably nine things. Yeah. Missing piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that'll help someone out there that's uh, looking into this more. Yeah. Yeah. So patients, providers, everybody can find you at tongue-tie-al.com, right? Com. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tongue-tie-al. Perfect. Who's Al? <laughs> Alabama. <That's you. laughs> oh, Dr. Baxter, before we go, yeah. speaking of Tongue Tie Academy, is there a provider list of people that have been trained by you? Oh, yeah. Great question. So we don't have like exactly a page set up for that. We probably should. Um, we have like yeah. a map. We have a map on our website of like Maps people good. taking yeah. the course kind of, mm-hmm. uh, it just has a flag. It doesn't have their name on it. Um, but we could work it. Yeah. We'll, we'll look into that. Yeah. Um, it's hard. Cause like I got an email yesterday and someone's like, Oh, someone said that they were trained by you. And then, oh. you know, they did a terrible release or something. I didn't get it all the way. Like what's going on. And so some people like said they're trained by me. Like I gave one lecture, they heard it at like a conference and then they say like I trained them. Um, or like they came to the course for one day and like, we're not watching them do releases. So like mm-hmm. Zoggy does like, he'll go into your office and like 
work with them and they come to your his office and like so he is doing more like like okay this person is like a breathe ambassador or breathe affiliate i think affiliate. Is what they call it. yeah so mm-hmm. the affiliate program is more like okay we can like vet these people and say they're they're legit um so for ours we don't have that set up exactly like that so i haven't seen any of these people do a release right they take the online mm-hmm. course hope they have really good knowledge hope they have a good start on it it's mm-hmm. going to take some practice obviously and seeing mm-hmm. people back and refining your technique but that's why we don't have like a provider directory of like who we've trained. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of the main reason why, but yeah. it's also a lot of work, but I can look at, look at, find something. Yeah. If people have questions about people in their area who do this, mm-hmm. probably the easiest way they can find people in their area is on like Facebook. Honestly, there's like yeah. state specific tongue tie groups. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you can see who in your area is good with babies or kids or whatever, and kind of crowdsourcing that. Because mm-hmm. otherwise it's, yeah, it's hard. They can contact us. When we email us, we'll probably just say, hey, check like the, you know, whatever area Facebook group. If we don't have someone like in LA, it'd be, you know, Dr. Zoggy, Dr. Pinto, or, mm-hmm. and, you know, Las Vegas would be Tara Urson. You know, someone yeah. emailed us last week from Las Vegas. Like, oh, Dr. Tara's there. So, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And you can, that's kind of what uh, us as myofunctional therapists are supposed to do too. We're supposed to vet people. We're supposed to help you yeah. find them. So if you have a good therapist, they're going to help you Quarterback find it. people too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's yeah. true. So, all right, Dr. Baxter, it was so great to see you again. We got to see each other in person a couple months ago. Yes, but we yes. appreciate you coming on and sharing your knowledge. Um, so you can find, you know, Tongue Tied on the website. You can find it on Amazon. Um, such great information. You can find Kimmy and myself also um, our websites. Mine's uh, www.orofacial-myology.com. Kimmy's is mouthmusclememory.com. And, uh, you know, find us on Instagram, find us on YouTube. We're, you know, we're everywhere. So um, (laughs) we are looking forward to keep working together and we will see you all soon. That sounds good. See you later. Good afternoon.